Right, okay, uh, this is project nine. Um, project eight, unfortunately, uh, hasn't been done yet, so uh, we're skipping that and we'll do it at a later date. But what we're trying to do today is to look at this box that has just arrived. So this is a burglar alarm system or intruder system uh, that's uh, made by Texacom. It's a Premier uh, Elite 24 system and we're going to see what's inside. All right, so get the old box open. Now the reason we're going through all this uh, process is we want to be able to connect up the um, burglar arm to our home automation system and uh, basically that means installing a new burglar arm. So the reason we're doing that is that uh, the company that installed the burglar arm that we have at the moment um, has an engineer code which basically means it's uh, impossible to do anything. So we're going to install a new one and uh, that'll mean it's completely Programmable, and we'll be able to see what's going. On. Right, okay. So it's full of uh, these things. These are these are these are terrible, aren't they? They're going it's like snowing. Okay, please hold on. I'm just going to get rid of these. Right, okay. Uh, we sent uh, that lot to landfill, uh, and this is what we left with. Okay, so this is um, these are mounting brackets for the um, infrared detectors. So if you want to attach them to the wall rather than to a corner wall, you have to use those. Things down there. Uh, what else do we have? These are the infrared detectors. And uh, let's have a look. These basically, you know, just trigger. All these are basically switches. Uh, let's see if we can uh, take one apart. Uh, -da, 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 -da. Right, uh, sorry for the delay in uh, getting this project going. Um, <clears throat> it's just pure in incompetence. So uh, there we are. Right, hopefully uh, they'll be a little bit more regular now. <clears throat> right, okay, so these are the infrared detectors, and uh, basically all they are are a switch. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we can take it apart. There's a screw here. Let's see what we can do. All right. Right. And of course, if you did that um, and opened the case when this was actually um, in situ, actually in part of the system, it would uh, sound an alarm. Right, okay, just one second. I'm going to get the old sledge up. All right, here we go. Cracked it, cracked it open. Okay, so what we have is basically a lens here, uh, which goes through there, and an infrared detector here, and various circuitry to prevent uh, false triggers going off. Uh, a few dip switches, uh, which are connected, and uh, and basically we have wiring here uh, of minus zero volts, plus 12 volts, alarm, tamper, and uh, the LED. Now I say that the, the alarm and tamper circuits are basically switches. So the alarm, uh, if you uh, trigger the alarm, the switch will... Uh... Right, sorry about that. Uh, phone call, where were we? Right. Yeah, so here we are. These are the detectors. So basically an infrared uh, switch, which... Um, obviously compensates for temperature and uh, light uh, background infrared levels. And uh, yeah, basically the terminals that matter are these alarm terminals and these tamper terminals. So basically all they are is switches, and uh, so you um, go past the alarm, the alarm circuit switch, uh, the alarm switch switches. And the other thing is if you actually, you know, open the case, uh, you know, do that, that obviously uh, makes a tamper switch uh, switch and uh, that's effectively what these infrared detectors are. They're relatively simple devices, they don't really do that much, there's just two switches. There's the spring which is the tamper switch. Okay, um, and we'll maybe do another video about how to wire these up because there's some quite clever um, ways of wiring them up which mean that you can't just bypass the tamper switch but we'll come to that later on. So these are the detectors and there are two types we've got here. The first one is just a um, uh, basic infrared detector um, which just works on infrared and uh, we've also got one here uh, which is called uh, DT which stands for dual technology and that basically means that there are two detectors in here. The first is a infrared detector just like the normal ones and the second one is a microwave detector 
so basically it pings microwaves around the uh, around the room and an alarm is only triggered if the microwaves uh, uh, signal is there and the infrared detector is signaled as well. So the reason for doing that is if you're in particularly harsh environments uh, things like conservatories uh, where you've got big changes in temperature. So if you think about a conservatory it can go from very hot to very cold very quickly. You know a cloud goes over for example and that would normally set off an infrared detector. It would detect that change in temperature. Um, but the microwave uh, sensor here also allows, you know, is a, almost a fail-safe detector. So it allows you to make sure it's a real signal um, because it will check if there's a change in the microwave um, level. Um, so that's designed to prevent false positives or false alarms. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, more detectors. Uh, this is an expander. Um, what this does is it allows you to add on more zones, and we'll uh, get to that in a moment. Uh, right, okay, these are all these detectors. Uh, this is uh, the keypad, so it's nice and nice and heavy actually. There we are, it's uh, you know, everything you expect in a keypad. And what this does is allows you to program the device. Uh, it's got a blue LED display uh, and uh, or LCD display. And this, uh, this will use to program the device. Okay, so you know you type in your code one 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 one, and uh, that would you know disarm or arm the alarm. So all very exciting. But the thing that we're really interested in is the actual control panel, which uh, is here. Try and fight these packing peanuts. Ah, that's all right. It's a few, all right, ah, a few, uh, a few of sacrifice there. Okay, uh, right. Okay. Right, okay, so this is um, this uh, alarm system is called the Premier Elite uh, version 2.11 firmware, that's very exciting. So um, this allows you to program, or you know, this is the uh, device. Okay, so um, uh, it says it requires all this stuff, but I don't think it does. Hmm. Requires a ricochet monitor, don't know what that is, or Wintex. Now I'm not sure what that is, that's that's a little bit worrying, but uh, hmm, we shall come back to that. Okay, now, right, so this is the box, and this uh, this box is remote from the um, keypads, and uh, let's have a look, what can we get into this? Right, okay, there's normal, normal uh, screws here. And of course, these have got tamper alarms on them as well. So if you undo them, the alarm would go off. So I think this can be enough. I'm just going to get another screwdriver. Okay, so let's uh, undo the control panel here. Good to get a screwdriver that actually fits. So as I say, this is um, a key uh, control panel that's left remote from the keypad device. So the idea behind that is um, if you come in with a sledgehammer and hit the keypad, the alarm still goes off because um, the battery will be in here, at least if you add one. Right, okay, and this just uh, comes off here. Of course there'll be a tamper detector in here, so if you remove that uh, lid, you um, get a nice tampery size. Uh, temporary sound, and this is the um, tamper detector here. It's just a spring mounted switch. Um, we've got a space for the battery here. Uh, this is the battery, the backup battery, so that um, if you cut the, the mains cable, uh, it will still go off. Uh, I've got to get one of those. These are resistors, okay? These are what we're going to be using in the um, when we wire up the detectors, and uh, it's called end of line wiring, and we'll do another video about that. Uh, power supply unit, so this is the thing that converts mains into uh, the voltage, DC voltage required for the control panel. Uh, so you put your battery there, power supply unit, and the control panel. And let's uh, zoom in to the control panel. Right. Okay, right, so basically lots of um, wires and, uh, and terminals. So the 
main things that we're going to look at are the the terminals on the um, the board. Right. Okay. So the battery. Um, uh, okay. So starting down here, these these are the strobe uh, tamper and bell. So this is the thing that you wire up to your external sound or your external alarm, basically. So that's normally on the, the uh, side of the house, and these are the terminals that go into that. So to make it flash the strobe um, to the bell light as well, and uh, of course tamper as well. So if someone cuts that cable, it'll still in go off inside. Um, other terminals here, uh, we have these are network connections. Okay, so these go to the um, the uh, keypad. So you wire up the keypad to transmit and receive, and positive and negative, uh, just so the signals from the keypad can go to the actual control panel. Uh, Opt one is quite interesting for us. That allows us to uh, take an output from the um, from the keypad from the control panel, and that we'll come to that later. Uh, speaker, so that's the speaker, um, internal speaker normally, or well, internal in the house. Um, these two might be quite interesting. Uh, auxiliary power supply of 12 volts, positive and negative. Uh, so we can wire up a Raspberry Pi through a buck converter to those. Uh, so we don't need a separate power supply for a Raspberry Pi or, or Arduino or, or Arduino or whatever. Um, aux auxiliary and fault. Uh, so these are also terminals that uh, allow you to detect if another circuit has been tampered with, for example, as a fault. And these are the zones, okay? So zone one to zone eight. So this particular model has eight zones. And these zones are things like these uh, PIR detectors, uh, or things like um, entry control read switches. So when you come in the front door, um, you can set it so the whole alarm doesn't go off immediately. Uh, they're, they're the zones that you have. So zones 1 to 8. So this allows 8 infrared detectors, window switches, front door detectors, whatever. Zone 1 to 8. And you'll see there are only two terminals. There's only, um, well, two terminals. So that is quite interesting. You know, how do we wire up our uh, alarm switch and our tamper switch to those terminals? And that's uh, quite an interesting thing. Because if you look, uh, these, these zones here, so zone 2, for example, would go to these alarm and tamper terminals. How do we, sorry, these alarm and, and tamper terminals. So there are four um, connectors here and only two here. So what do we do? How do we do that? And we'll do another video about how to wire up an infrared detector to a control panel. So zones one to eight, and uh, actually what we also have here is this expander. So this, uh, allows us to have more zones. Uh, now, you know, why, why do you want so many zones? Well, um, the first thing is that, uh, of course, you know, you've got lots of rooms. That's nice to have one zone, zone per room. Um, because we're also going to use these for monitoring of uh, occupancy of rooms. Okay, so we want to use these not just for the infrared detectors, um, for the burglar alarm, but also uh, for um, monitoring uh, you know whether people are in rooms or not so you know potentially to wire it up to things like central heating and these, these are the uh, expanders and it gives us zones 9 to um, uh, what's that zone 9 to 16 so another eight zones and another auxiliary output for power okay made in England there you go um, right and this just fits into a jumper here, um, so it adds on to the panel and gives you another eight zones. Right, okay. And if you want more than that, you've got external um, uh, external zone expanders, as they're called. And different panels have different numbers of zones that they can have. So this particular panel can do up to 24 zones, so we've only got uh, eight plus eight here. Uh, so you can go up to 24, we've got options for I think 44 or 60, uh, sorry, uh, 48 or 88 or 168 or if you're really uh, into your infrared detectors and all that sort of stuff you know have up to 640 zones on some of these panels, they're more expensive. 
and uh, yeah, that's kind of overkill for a sort of domestic uh, setup. But anyway, you know, the whole thing can uh, can be expanded. So you may want to, you know, um, have a detector on a factory or or whatever. Okay. Um, other outputs that are interesting. Um, uh, we'll say we talked about this tamper switch here. Um, the, the this is the uh, input for the uh, power supply unit. So this comes from power supply into there. And the the things that are, you know are quite the most interesting for this sort of home automation sort of point of view are these output terminals here. So if you can see, they call them Digicom outputs, and it goes one, two, eight, and then uh, we have another two terminals at the end. But the, um, so remote input and line fault, okay, let's not worry about those. So one to eight. And the interesting thing about these is these are outputs, okay? So what you can do is you can program the alarm to um, output when there's an alarm, for example. So if there's an alarm, you can have a DC output on, you know, a few milliamps come out of these signals to say there's an alarm. Or this, for example, a confirmed alarm, which means if two infrared detectors have gone off. Um, so it's very unlikely to be a false alarm if two infrared detectors have gone off independently. Um, and you can also wire them up so if zone two goes off, output two goes off here. So the idea is what we're going to do is first of all we're going to install this um, and just getting it set up um, and working. And then the next thing is that we will actually attempt to wire this up to a Raspberry Pi so that um, when the alarm is signalled or triggered, you can then get a uh, signal that goes to the Raspberry Pi, and then you can you know, do all sorts of things. You can get it to email you, uh, you can get it to SMS you, or send an SMS signal, uh, which is kind of nice because, you know, someone comes in and cuts the uh, telecoms cable or the, you know, telephone cable, then normally you'd be kind of stuck. But if you've got a Raspberry Pi connected to these outputs, you can then... Um, uh, send an SMS and that's you know got a battery backup here uh, if you power it from these auxiliary outputs 12 volt outputs you know put a buck converter down to 5 volts for example for the Raspberry Pi it's you know automatically backed up there's a backup power supply which will allow that signal to go out um, so that's what we're trying to do and uh, we'll see how the install goes uh, a bit scared about this uh, sign here that says uh, requires ricochet monitor Wintex uh, 6.2.1. This is software that's uh, developed by the manufacturers. So um, mm, there we go. We'll see if uh, well, it'll be, it'll be interesting to report how many uh, false alarms we have, how many neighbours come round, uh, how many police presences are there, how many uh, helicopters turn up. So um, yeah, we'll see how uh, how we get on. But essentially, these panels are very versatile, allow you lots of zones and lots of outputs. So. Uh, the idea is to connect one of these professional uh, alarm panels to a Raspberry Pi to monitor what's going on. So there we are. Uh, we'll do another video about how to wire up these uh, passive infrared detectors uh, because that's not uh, entirely trivial. And uh, we'll see how we go. So thanks for watching.